Welcome to today's video everybody. Today we have the same familiar bench table that you already seen in those past benchmarks for thermal paste and right here we have Polar Term X8 and X10. Now these are two new thermal pastes on the market and in general a short introduction Polar Term was established by Thermal Grizzly so just so you know that right from the start we can expect something good. Uh, I hope at least, right? So What's it all about today? We have uh, two packages of each of X8 and X10 and the one thing I have to say right on start when I was doing all the benchmarks and thermals and all the other stuff, right? Uh, you remove the caps and you can't recognize which one's which, right? So, but I didn't mix them up. So what happened is I was wondering why, why didn't they place like an actual lettering or just X8 or X10 on each of these tubes? And then I realized they have different caps. So that was something that I wanted to share with you guys. You know, some of these stuff happened during uh, benchmarks or anything that I uh, do during uh, assembly or whatever. So this was one of those parts where I was just like with a big question mark above my head. But regardless of that, we have four volumes of each. We're talking about 2, 5, 10 and 40 grams. And what's the aim behind the Polar Term? Well, they want to reach a certain public in terms of having price per performance ratio quite solid. Now, when we take into consideration X8, this is more of an um, everyday user, I would say something like that, or someone who is in the beginning, gamers and people like that. But X10 is more of a, and this is what they stated, uh, more of an experienced uh, builders, gamers and professionals. Now. For professionals, I would say that my list it has to go on at least top three. But regardless of that, uh, it's going to be quite interesting because I really want to see how it performs in this scenario, in my benchmark, where I have everything assembled the same way as I did in the past two videos that you had the opportunity to see. So basically we have now loads of thermal paste and I know there are still some that I need to cover but we'll get to that part eventually. So what you get inside the box on each of these thermal pastes, you get depending on the size, depending on the volume, you get the thermal paste, you get the instruction manual on how to apply and all the other stuff, you get the spatula and you get that additional tip that helps you spread the thermal paste additionally. Now the interesting thing is when we go and compare X8 and X10, because I need to do that as well, in my opinion, operating temperature for both are from minus 50 to plus 150. Density for both is 2.6 grams per cubic centimeter, color is gray and they are both silicon based. Of course, they aren't electrically conductive. Now when I place them on this uh, water block, I uh, just wanted to see the difference in coloring. I wanted to see the difference in, in texture, let's put it this way. So the coloring is exactly the same, but we do get a bit more uh, fluidity in the X8. So when you compare X10 and X8, but it looks like the X8 is a bit more fluid. So the thing about these two is that the Polar Term X8 is more on the affordable side that you'll just, you know, put a thermal paste on it and just forget about it. So comparing X8 and X10 to others that I reviewed when we were talking about density in general, when you're applying the thermal paste to your processor, you can actually notice that it's really harder to spread the thermal paste on your processor when we're talking about X8 and the X10 as well. So this comes to a point that you have to be, well, not really careful, but it's really straightforward because you have that direct spatula that comes directly from the tube to your processor, which helps you spread the thermal paste on your processor. And then you have the additional spatula that if you want to really finalize and just do it properly uh, to spread it across the whole processor. Now, the thing is when we're talking about the these two, we're having two different target audience, which we will have to test out and see what will happen. I mean, to be honest, I don't see the too much difference between the price. So it has to be a bigger difference in performance to make it more, I don't know, for instance, you really don't care in terms of if you're going to pay 290 or 390. So two grams of X8, that sounds really strange, but we're talking about thermal paste again. It's uh, 2.90 euros and the X10 is 3.90 euros. So one euro for a 
possibly better thermal paste. Then we have 5 grams, 490 compared to 590. Again, 1 euro difference. Then we go with 10 grams, 890 to 1090, and 40 grams, 1490 to 2590. Now, here you can notice the difference in 40 grams. But to be honest, if you're just building one or two, or you're just eventually throughout six months or one year going to change your thermal paste, you can easily go with five grams because you have like four or five applications possible towards the processor in those five grams. And I think that's quite all right. May, uh, let's say three to four applications if you really want to be sure and add that extra. Now, before we go into benchmarks, I do have to repeat the configuration of this bench table. So we have the Inwin MR36. This one was used the same way with all the other thermal paste that I reviewed. We have, of course, MD Ryzen 9 uh, 7900X3D, again, the same thing. Kingston Fury Renegade 2x16 on 6400 MHz, and the GPU is RTX 4080 Super. Uh, it's straightforward, straight simple, uh, nothing to complicate. Uh, it's going to be quite interesting to see this because I'm really thinking this could be a quite a good deal, especially with the price. And since they are aiming for price to performance, this could be a good thing. So let's start with the X8. I the 64 system stability test for 30 minutes ran. CP went out to 89 degrees. Now I do have to mention we are talking about AMD. We're not talking about Intel. It actually took sixth place with 89 degrees on the CPU and 4775 MHz clock speed. It took sixth place, but we have two liquid metals up on front. So it actually is on the fourth position, which is outstanding. And for this price, we're talking about 290 for two grams. That's outstanding to be fourth above it it's it was really close it was really close in the same position as the arctic mx6 and just behind the nth1 now let's go with x10 so x10 again the same thing i the 64 extreme edition system stability test for 30 minutes we had the same thermals 89 degrees but we had 4825 megahertz clock speed which puts it in fourth position with liquid metal or second position without liquid metal so it goes toe to toe and i would say it shares the second position with thermal grizzly cryonaut extreme so this is outstanding and actually no it actually shares the noctua nth1 as well so these three are on the second place sharing that position noctua nth2 is still at first and i'm totally disregarding uh, liquid metal i'm just placing them here so you can see uh, the difference and everything else so this is quite good i mean for this price comparing these three for the prices compared to x8 and x10 this is uh, unbelievable and then we go with uh, cinebench r23 where i was running a throttling test for 10 minutes again on the same processor of course and the x8 went up to seventh position now why seventh we have 84 degrees on the cpu 4975 megahertz clock speed it had 21 passes but just at the brink of ending the benchmark it entered 21 pass so this is why it's at this position and it scored 26,560 points so with liquid metal it got seventh position but without it it's sixth so it's just behind deep cool dm9 and right in front of nth1 now of course just so you don't get strange out about deep cool dm9 it's it ended up being a bit better than Octo NTH1. So in those terms, it kind of shares the position with Deepcool DM9 and actually almost with MX6. But MX6 scored so much points in the bench that it's unbelievable. And then we go with X10. So 10 minutes throttling test. It it got 82 degrees with 5,000 megahertz clock speed. 21 passes and this was like uh, I think 10 seconds before the end of uh, the whole benchmark so this is why it's a bit higher than the MX6 it took fourth place with liquid metal but third place without it uh, only thing in front only ones on front are knocked to NTH2 and thermal grizzly cryonaut extreme so basically what you can say is that x8 is quite solid and you can see that when i removed you know i always used p size to apply it to the processor and this time i really wanted to show you how it actually spreads if you place it in a proper position so as you can see from x8 and now for the x10 
this is how it spread it quite nicely so it covered the whole processor without any problems the only difference when we're talking about x8 and x10 spreading and everything after a couple of heat runs and everything all together the x10 actually does look a bit better without a doubt so what I can say is x8 is quite solid when we're talking about performance and where it placed regarding price per performance ratio but then when you take into consideration that x10 is just one euro okay depending on the volume that you buy right so depending on the volume that you buy for instance let's go with two grams 290 compared to 390 that's one euro to get much better performance to get much more durability in those in terms of not consistency but in in terms of being able to have this x10 being placed on your cpu for a longer period of time that is outstanding and then if you go with 5 grams which is 590 compared to 490 which is x8 you can actually change your thermal paste multiple times per year just to have that clean fresh thermal paste consistency of the cpu performance and stuff like that so i think the x8 is quite solid if you're really on the budget and i mean like really on the budget you're looking for every euro wherever you can save but if you're really going with a bit higher spec pc go with x10 you'll be definitely satisfied because price to performance this is definitely a best buy and it might be strange for you guys for me saying that this is a best buy and this is still approved but let's be honest they stated this for enthusiasts professionals and pc builders that are a bit advanced and gamers right okay but uh, taking into consideration the price tag for the volume that you get that's outstanding so it it might be strange for their premium their top line thermal paste compared to x8 that it gets the best buy badge but when you take into consideration everything i think that's quite solid so pc crazy best buy badge for the x10 and still i'm gonna give a pc crazy approved badge for the x8 because it still did perform quite nicely and then you have the price right but still the best buy badge has to go to the x10 because it performs better and you don't get double the price so yeah guys this is it so x8 and x10 from polar term uh, the links are in the description so you can check out well i totally told you the prices but you can find out where to buy them and uh, that'll be all for today guys if you like this type of video don't forget to subscribe hit the like button click the notification bell for future content coming quite shortly and hopefully we'll extend the thermal pace comparison uh, in the future more and more thanks for watching see you next time guys bye bye Thank you.